Doing design is a, uh, can be a lonely thing. Either you're born with the facility sometimes or through years of training and experience you develop the facility to care about the design world. And as you're acquiring that skill, you're actually making yourself less normal than regular people. I can see things in typefaces that normal people can't. And that's not because I'm better than them, I just have acquired the sensitivity. The sensitivity is helpful to me to do my job, but it's not what regular people need in their lives, right? I think that I can affect their lives by demonstrating it, but it's a lonely thing. And when you talk to other designers, one of the things you get immediately is a sense of common purpose. You know, one way or another, regardless of whether we're graphic designers like me or like architects, product designers, um, event designers, experience designers, interaction designers, all of us really are doing something that is inherently social because it, you know, we're seeking to get a reaction in the real world from other human beings, but has an element of, of solitary activity in it just because you're in your own head, you're working hard on something, and you really don't know what effect it's going to have until you do it. I don't want to overemphasize logos in the world. I think that basically if you act with intelligence and integrity and consistency, you'll, you'll develop a brand, quote unquote. And whether you're a person or a nonprofit institution, a small organization, a giant corporation, if you bring intelligence and integrity and consistency to what you're doing and what then the product you're making is helping people or worthwhile or desirable or making the world a better place, as long as you sort of, you could almost do anything and make it be okay. But what's fun about logo design, what makes it interesting, what makes it hold so much power for us, I think, is two things. One is that um, there's something very primitive about it, right? I mean, many of them are just such simple marks that they're not farther evolved much than um, hieroglyphics or marks on you know, cave walls from, you know, millions of years ago, right? And what happens too, what makes them interesting is that they get invested with meaning. If you take something like the Nike swoosh or the Target Target or uh, any symbol that represents a big company, you know, a lot of what we see when we look at that logo isn't really happening in the logo. It happens in our own mind. And what's interesting about particularly that kind of telegraphic communication is that it's inherently participatory, it's inherently two-way, it's inherently interactive, if you want to call it that. You know, you're sort of like taking all the experience you had with that product or with that institution or with whoever that symbol represents, and you're sort of um, imposing it onto what could be very simple shapes that really have no inherent meaning at all. So it's a delicate thing to manipulate, very hard to talk about with clients sometimes because it's confusing. You know, they'll see a uh, um, they'll see a logo. You know, they'll want a new logo. Then they show them the logo, and they say, "Well, that doesn't mean anything. I want a logo like Nike's." You know, that's sort of. But the Nike guys, when they were shown that logo, they they wanted an, an Adidas logo. That's what they wanted. They wanted three stripes, and instead they couldn't have three stripes because another shoe already had three stripes. Here's something you can have. It's this thing that looks like a chubby check mark. They're like, "Oh well, I guess we'll use that then." You know, now people think it means something. It didn't really mean anything then, except what it came to mean is all the is everything Nike did to support it. Not just the advertising, but the experience you or I or anyone else has had wearing those shoes, doing something athletic, and taking some satisfaction out of it, and coming to associate it in some vague way with that particular brand. So there, there is a kind of like magic and a kind of joy in it that makes it fun.